Welcome back to module 10 of uh, object oriented analysis and design. We have been talking about uh, minor elements of uh, object models. We have uh, already discussed about the aspects of uh, typing, the strongly and weakly typed languages, statically and dynamic type languages and we have talked about polymorphism. Next, we talk about the second uh, element which is concurrency. Concurrency is a, as the name suggests, is uh, relates to two or more things happening together in the same time. So, if I uh, have one object O1, if I have another object O2, I have another object O3, and these are between themselves sending different uh, messages. Uh, and expecting to get service, we have seen this model, then certainly you cannot have a sequential or well ordered structure to do this. You want uh, uh, all these, all of these to happen as and when they need to happen. So, while O 1 say is sending a message uh, M 1 to O 2 to get a service, at the same time it is possibly getting a message M 2 from O 3 to provide a service. Both of these have to happen at the same time. Now, this is known as a concurrent behavior and at the, at the same instance it is also possible that I have objects like O 4, I have objects like O 5 who are just sitting idle, who are not neither sending messages nor receiving messages. So, they are not actually doing anything. So, the concurrency is a property that distinguishes an active object from an inactive one. These are the inactive ones and these are the active objects which are doing something or the other at the same span of time. Certainly, you can understand that uh, without concurrency, the abstract client server model that I talked of earlier as a basic computing model of object based systems would not at all work, because I cannot have an ordering of exactly first uh, step 1 has to happen, then step 2 has to happen, message 1, message 2, message 7, message 6. I will not be able to, we will not be able to define this single temporal order for things to happen. So, concurrency is a very necessary part of the object model of the typical systems that we work with and this is a cartoonist's view of what happens inside the body of a uh, cat uh, who is wagging the tail and digesting the food and at the same time trying to hunt something for itself. Coming to a more mundane example which uh, I am sure would be closer to your heart, uh, all of you I am sure use mobile phones in different aspects. So, here I am just talking about different uh, scenarios. For example, you are on your mobile phone suppose you are editing your address book, you are adding a new friend. Now, while you are doing this apparently your focus is on editing the address book, but at the same time the phone is doing a lot of other things. For example, at that same time it has to remain connected to the base station, I connect, being connected to the base station is we commonly say no, my phone does not have signal, my phone does have signal. That is a that is a kind of visual indication we get. What it means that it is being there are uh, land stations uh, called base stations to which my phone is currently communicating and is connected and all the time when our phone is live, when our phone has towers, it basically is connected to the base station. So, it cannot it is not acceptable for us that while I am editing my address book, my phone does not remain connected. So, every regularly it is sending certain information to the base station, it is getting some information from the base station, again sending information, getting information. So, this task and this task has to happen concurrently. And while this is going on, while I am addressing, I am changing the address book, I suddenly receive an SMS. So, the delivery of the SMS happens when the phone is connected, when I am editing the address book. During that time itself the SMS get delivered and as the SMS is getting delivered, it is uh, being uh, put to my SD card, a, a notification pops up 
by the side of my address book screen to tell me that an SMS has come. So, that notification raise has to happen. So, if you look into all of these, they will need to happen concurrently. There is no specific ordering strictly between all of them. Of course, uh, SMS being delivered will be followed by notification. That there is an ordering there, but there is no specific ordering in terms of how much I edit in the address book and the SMS being delivered and the connection of the phone. In a different scenario, if well, we are in a call, the phone certainly needs to um, uh, remain connected to the base station. So, this is the call is a task, this is a task, another SMS can get delivered and in fact, a second call may arrive. So, I get to see that a call waiting is happening. So, the ongoing call and the waiting call have to happen in the same time space. So, this needs concurrent behavior. You are watching a video in your uh, mobile phone, you are still connected to the base station. So, while you are watching the video without disturbing you an app is getting downloaded and updated installed in your phone, a whatsapp message is getting delivered and you get a notification for that is raised. All of this happen in the same time space, there could be if you would start uh, just uh, thinking of uh, different instances of your use of the mobile phone, you will at for every kind of scenario you will uh, identify 4, 5, 10, 20 different things that need to happen, the tasks that need to happen at the same time and without a predefined order, a strict predefined order for things to work properly. So, that is a that is a basic uh, significance of uh, having concurrency in uh, object model. So, if we think about all of these address, if I think about say the address book uh, is an object if I think about base station connector is an object, if I think about SMS is an object, if I think about notification is an object, if I think about call as an object, if I think about app as an object and so on, they all will need to interact, exist and work at the same time domain. So, that is the basic notion of uh, concurrency that we need to work with. Certainly, coming to the technical terms, uh, concurrency basically relates to uh, processes in uh, our computing system and we often talk about two kinds of concurrency more, more frequently. One is known as a heavyweight concurrency or which is commonly called a process, the other is known as a lightweight concurrency which is commonly called a thread. A heavyweight uh, concurrency or process is an entity that the waste deals with and provides its own address space. In contrast, a lightweight uh, concurrency happens within the within a single waste process, which is a heavyweight uh, concurrency item, but it shares the address space that the heavyweight process or heavyweight concurrency of the process has. It does not get a separate address space. It shares that with other lightweight processes and so on. The communication typically is expensive uh, between uh, processes or heavyweight concurrency items. It is usually through a shared memory in terms of lightweight concurrency items or threads. So, these different kinds of uh, concurrency models has to work with the way I want the objects to interact. If so, naturally objects which belong to the same module, objects which are closely integrated should work concurrently using threads, whereas very different modules uh, which are completely independent, which have very little uh, functional overlap or uh, very little code overlap would possibly work as independent processes, because they need to handle very different independent resources of the same system. So, as we go, go uh, to the refinement of the design uh, in terms of your object models, you might need to look into this concurrency aspects of the object models. We move on to the last uh, minor element of object model that is called persistence. Persistence basically talked about talks about two major axes, axis of time and axis of space we have been talking about objects all the time. Now, finally, when I realize in a programming system, what is an object? An object will be represented by a contiguous sequence of uh, memory locations, 
a collection of bits together. So, there is always a beginning of an object, an object gets created by some other object, because everything is object. Once it is created, it occupies certain memory space and it stays for a certain period of time till it is destroyed. Now, in terms of time and space, many things can happen. For example, an object may continue to exist even after it is created ceases to exist. Somebody created that object, but that whoever created that creating object has been destroyed, but the created object will stay. How long it will remain is an independent factor in the design. Similarly, an object's location may move, a object may have been created in this memory space, memory space of thread 1. Here I got an object, this is my conceptually this is my object and this is what it has got created in terms of memory. I may move it to some other say thread 3 at a different location and say now this object has I want a blue. Now, I say that this is where this object has gone, this is a is the same object, but I may change its location. So, the space and time of an object can go through different kinds of transformations and how those uh, happen uh, is addressed in the issue of persistence. the cartoonist's uh, view for you to enjoy. I will not go into explaining this, uh, you should take your time off and try to understand what is being said in the persistence here. Let me focus on the fact that uh, persistence built a continuum of object existence. As we have already explained an object, let me get back to red that is more prominent. So, an object in a software takes certain amount of space and exists for a certain amount of time. So, how much so if we if we just look into these two axes say we say this is time and this is space. So, we will have objects in different points in this space. So, the further down you go on the right here means these are objects which stays longer from the creation to the destruction is a longer time. If I go on this then it says that these are objects which move between more and more number of spaces address spaces. So, if we look into this then we find that there is a continuum of object existence that is it varies significantly as to how long an object uh, stays and where. And for example, the shortest living objects usually are the transitory objects, objects that get created because you just wanted to move some value from one place to the another. For example, if you know uh, C plus plus the basic of C plus plus and uh, you are returning a value by copy, then while you return that the actual object that you are trying to return cannot be returned, because that object has to die as soon as the proceed the function call is over. So, what you do you make a transitory object, you make a temporary object and return that or for that matter if I am trying to evaluate something like a plus b plus c, then I cannot evaluate all of them together. So, what I do I kind of evaluate something like t 1 is a plus b and then t 2 say if this has to go to say x, then we say t 2 is t 1 plus c and then we will say x is t 2. Because at every time the object can do only one thing, only either add two numbers a and b, add two numbers the temporary result of addition of a and b with c and so on. So, these kind of objects are the transitory objects or temporary objects, they naturally have very short uh, time span. because T 1 gets created here and will get destroyed here, it is done. Two different uh, objects that we might need to keep in the database, think about the leave management system 
we have talked about so many employees of different types and certainly these employees stay in the system for a very long period of time. Once a, an executive has joined and has been created in the system database, that employee object uh, representing the executive will remain till that executive has been purged from the system, possibly because uh, she has uh, left or uh, she is resigned and so on. So, the objects that exist in database uh, often outlive. So, this is a very critical concept outlive the execution of a single program, which means that the object representing an executive will remain much longer in the system compared to the method that needs to be performed for requesting a leave by that executive or by approving a leave for that executive and so on. So, based on this, this is a, this is kind of a continuum hierarchy of uh, most transient to most persistent objects. These are expression uh, evaluation, I just uh, showed you an example that how transient values happen in expression evaluation. Similar things uh, will happen for local function invocation, you know uh, whenever we do call by value the in C the values get copied and those copies will get removed when uh, the function invocation is over. There are global variables dynamically heap items that means dynamically allocated, vari allocated variables which outlive uh, the scope that they relate to and so on till you talk about really data based uh, persistent objects uh, in the database which will outlive any kind of programs which uh, create manipulate and destroy them. So, this is it is it is very important to understand uh, this continuum and whenever you are designing the object uh, understand what is the persistence model of that object for very simple things. For example, if an object is very transitory it, it uh, occurs and then disappears then we would like to make it uh, very lightweight we will try to keep it very lightweight because if there are too many transitory objects they are getting created and destroyed created and destroyed very frequently. So, system will have a lot of overhead of simply creating and destroying objects. If an object is very large it is huge it is takes a lot of space we need to make sure that uh, it does not have ample transitory behavior it should have more persistent behavior and only a small part of that object which might need changes or which might need relocation will have to be treated separately so that you do not get into performance issues. So, different aspects of uh, persistence or different levels of persistence in time and in space will uh, guide how we should design different objects, how we should encapsulate and modularize them, so that I can design a efficient system. So, these factors, uh, this is the third factor that you need to keep in mind. So, to summarize uh, we have in this module uh, talked about the three minor or uh, useful, but uh, not exactly essential aspects of object models, but uh, I would uh, assure you from uh, my experience that uh, when if you want to do a good object oriented system design or rather if you want to do a good design for a complex system, then alongside the major elements is very critical to take care of the minor elements. because minor elements relate to three major axes of implementation, which often turn out to be the core non-functional uh, requirements of a system leading to performance in terms of time, performance in terms of space and uh, general uh, behavior of how responsive the system is, how robust the system is and so on. So, please keep the aspects of typing in mind which grades between strong weak and no type between static and dynamic and uh, is critical for OOP. You will need to uh, certainly uh, be conscious about the concurrency to be able to build client server models and persistence will immediately tell you what kind of system you want to build. For example, a very, uh, very simple um, uh, example for persistence would be you would need to decide whether at all the objects outlive your application or not. If they outlive, then your immediate conclusion is there will have to be a database, there will have to be a database to store, there has to be a persistent store to keep the objects, because 
otherwise all variables and objects that you create deal with in a program will certainly disappear will get forcibly destroyed as long as your main function ends. So, you will not be able to uh, work with them next time you run your program. So, these are the considerations that you will need to work with. So, with this I will conclude on the elements of object models and next we will start talk about the other details of object models from the next module.